What's up guys? Welcome to KQ Chem. This is Karthik from the Department of Chemistry, Guru Nanak College. And today we are going to learn how to name a spiro compound in under 10 minutes. Now a lot of you would be like, wait a sec, what are spiro compounds in the first place? So let us try and answer that first. The word spiro or spirane, which they are sometimes referred to as, comes from the Latin word spira, meaning a twist or coil. Now here are a few examples of spiro compounds. Now why are they called twisted or coil is very evident to us by looking at the structure. Another thing that we observe is that in these structures there are two or three rings linked together by one common carbon atom. Now this common carbon atom here is known as a spiro atom. Now please note that spiro compounds can be monospiro, meaning they have only two rings and one spiro atom. Or they can be polyspiro, that is containing three or more alicyclic systems. Or they can also be heterocyclic if the spiro atom or any atom in either ring is not a carbon atom. Now for this video, we will stick to the IUPAC nomenclature of monospiro compounds. In case you want to learn nomenclature of polyspiro or heterocyclic spiro compounds, do let me know in the comment section below so that I can make a video on that too. Now another question that we need to answer is where do we find spiro compounds? Well, they are present throughout the natural world. They form motifs in a lot of drugs and also some dyes. One interesting fact to note here is that they find so many applications in medicinal chemistry due to their optical activity. Well, yes, you heard me right. Spirals can show optical isomerism even in absence of a chiral center due to molecular chirality. Now that's another concept and I'll be making an entire video on optical activity and RS nomenclature of spirals. So do subscribe to this channel and set the notification on so that you know when that video is out. So now that we are done with the introduction part, let's get down to business and start naming monospiro compounds. As is the case with all IUPAC nomenclatures, we have a set of rules which we have to follow to assign a name. So let's look at the rules first. Rule 1. The name will start with the word spiro followed by a square bracket mentioning the number of carbon atoms in each ring, excluding the spiro carbon in ascending order separated by a dot. To understand this rule, let's bring in a molecule. Now here we see a three-membered ring attached to a four-membered ring. When we exclude the spiro atom, the smaller ring has two carbon atoms while the larger has three. Hence we will write spiro square bracket. 2.3 bracket close. Rule 2. The square bracket is followed by the name of the parent alkane which corresponds to the total number of carbon atoms in the ring including the spiro carbon atom. Now using the same example, a molecule here has 6 carbon atoms in the ring. Hence our parent is a hexane. Thus after the square bracket we will add the word hexane to make it spiro 2.3 hexane. Let's get to rule number three. The numbering starts from the atom which is bonded to the spiro atom and belongs to the smaller ring. The smaller ring is numbered first and then numbering goes through the spiro atom into the larger ring. In our case, since we have a smaller three member ring, this is where we'll start numbering from. And this carbon here will get number one as it has an amine functional group attached to it. Then we go to the spiro atom and then to the larger ring and we see that both the parts give the methyl substituent carbon number 5. So you can do it either ways. Now let's look at rule number 4. When there are functional groups or substituents present, the ring is numbered in such a way that they receive the lowest possible number. And as we know, the functional groups are indicated by using their suffixes, while the substituents are indicated by their prefixes, and you also have to mention their positions and if there are more than two substituents, you have to arrange them alphabetically. Now we have already done that and we see that both our functional group amine and the substituent methyl have got the lowest possible number. Now as amine is our functional group, we will use a suffix for it which is amine and the methyl group will be indicated by the prefix which is methyl. Now adding all that to the name the final name comes out as 5 methyl spiro 2.3 hexane 1 amine. 
Now here is a pro tip. Add 1 to the sum of the two numbers inside the square bracket and this should always match the name of the parent. In our case, it does. And it's always advisable to match this. Now let's solve a few more problems. Let's look at our first molecule. Both the rings here have four carbon atoms each after excluding the spiro atom. There are total nine carbon atoms, hence our parent is non-name. We have two functional groups and both of them are ketone, hence we will use the suffix dione. Since both the rings are of the same size, we can start numbering from any of the two rings, bearing in mind that the ketone functional group should get the lowest possible number and in our case they get number one and six. Thus, we can write the name as spiro 4.4 nonane 16 dione. Now, please bear in mind that since we are going to use a prefix di to indicate two ketones, we will retain the letter E in the name of the parent, that is nonane. Let's look at another example. In this molecule, we see two rings having four and five carbon atoms after we exclude the spiro atom, of course. The total number of carbon atoms are 10, which makes it a decane. We have two alkene functional group, hence we use the suffix diene. We start numbering from the four-membered ring and then go to the five-membered ring, keeping in mind that the double bond should get the lowest possible number, hence they get number one and seven. Hence our name becomes spiro 4.5 deca 17 diene. Now again in this case, we use di to indicate two alkene groups. Hence, we retain the letter A. Let's bring in another example. Here, after excluding the spiro atom, we have two and four carbon atoms in both the rings. Our total number of carbon atoms are seven, hence our parent is a heptane. We have one functional group that is a carboxylic acid, for which I will use the suffix carboxylic acid and not oic acid, as the carbon atom of the acid is not a part of the parent. Although you will also find in some books that they use the suffix oic acid in such cases, but I won't really suggest you to do so. We start the numbering from the smaller ring and thus carboxylic acid is present at position number 5. And finally when we write the name, the name is spiro 2.4 heptane 5 carboxylic acid. Now let us twist this a little bit and try to draw a structure from the ring. So let's say we have to draw the structure for 6 chlorospiro 4.5 decane. Now the way I ask my students to do this is by drawing the spiro atom first. Since we have 4 and 5 inside the bracket, we draw 4 and 5 dots on either side of the spiro atom. Then we will join all the atoms to give us the parent. Let's start numbering this, starting from the smaller ring, then to the larger ring. And finally, at position 6, we put a chloro substitute. Ta-da! There we are. Well, with this, I hope naming a monospiro compound will not be a problem anymore. Now, here are a few structures for you to try. Please leave the answers in the comment section below. If you want to solve more problems, I'll also be attaching a link for a small test below in the description. Please feel free to take that test whenever you can. Well, that's it guys for this video. Do let me know how you liked it by hitting up the thumbs button. And please share, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more such cool videos in the future. Till I see you next, it's goodbye from me. Enjoy learning and remember everything is chemistry. See out.